Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at uh, the first part of the emotions chapter, and then when we meet again, we'll wrap up uh, the rest of the chapter. So as to, you know, get our minds in the right place, uh, for a recap, you know, we, you know, we're looking at, you know, how we start to create our realities from the bottom up. So again, kind of keep in mind the whole directional focus of symbolic contractionism, kind of starting at that bottom level and then kind of working your way up from there. And so here we start to see, you know, some of the action that goes into creating the reality. And so kind of on the level of the uh, mind, you know, we have these shared understandings, uh, what we call uh, definitions of situations. And once everybody kind of is on the same page, more or less, and then when we kind of follow those rules and we kind of enter the roles, we play the roles, we uh, kind of play our roles, but also play our roles in relation to other people. Uh, then we start to get a functional reality. Um, but when people are not on the same page, when people don't perform their roles properly, and then that's when the disorder, uh, the dysfunction uh, can emerge. So nevertheless, you kind of recognize you know, what's going on in terms of you know, the identity, the self-concepts, and then you start to see the self-concepts relating to more action and behavior. And when we are acting, according to how we're supposed to act and other people are doing the same, that's when we have the uh, functional realities. So we also can see some issues of emotion, uh, issues of power, specifically, you know, when we are role playing, you know, we typically need to do some type of emotion work and we'll get back to this idea in this upcoming chapter. But basically, you know, we want to project uh, certain feelings. You want to, suppress other feelings and this all operates in reference to what we call uh, feeling rules uh, basically expectations of how people are supposed to uh, uh, supposed to feel uh, what's considered to be appropriate uh, for a given situation and then also we can look at issues of power you know basically you know when we have these different roles uh, typically you know it's not a kind of a horizontal playing field uh, typically there's a vertical ordering and you know, within that hierarchy, there's gonna be a power imbalances. And so, you know, we act in certain ways uh, because we can, you know, when we have the power, you have a lot more autonomy, a lot more freedom to do whatever you wanna do. But uh, when you lack the resources, uh, we typically at the bottom of that vertical ordering, you have uh, less autonomy, you're more constrained in terms of uh, what you can do and how you can do it. So uh, moving into uh, the first uh, part of the emotions chapter, you know, we can say that emotions have been brought up multiple times already, and, you know, we'll continue to talk about them throughout the rest of the text. And we can say that, you know, this is the case because it's a growing area within symbolic contractionism, but also emotions is a growing area in uh, social psychology, uh, sociology as a whole. Uh, you know, Dr. Smith and I have always talked about uh, kind of co-teaching an entire class just on the idea of, uh, you know, sociology, uh, social psychology uh, of emotions. And so, you know, what you see going on here is basically, you know, recognizing the social dimension of emotions. And, you know, you can do this in many ways, and we will be doing that uh, throughout the chapter. Basically, you know, recognizing that, yes, emotions are very personal. Uh, for people, but they're very social at the same time. So kind of recognizing that dynamic between the personal and social sides uh, of emotions. That's basically where we start to get into in this chapter. And we revisit some ideas uh, later on that we have talked about briefly before. So here are you know, basic tenets when it comes to symbolic interactionism and its overall kind of uh, approach to looking at emotions and, you know and the theme basically is you know they're, again they're very social in nature um, you know emotions are fostered you know in social life you know so when we have certain ex uh, certain experiences on that emotional level uh, typically uh, those emotions are a reflection of what's going on uh, socially speaking and um, so, you know, emotions are connected to these reactions from the body, uh, physio the physio physiological level as well. But, 
you know, kind of that social element is kind of recognizing, um, you know, what these emotions are, uh, giving them uh, labels, and then kind of the meanings that are associated with those labels. So yes, you know, we can say that emotions are kind of feelings, but, you know, they're very connected to the social world in the sense that it's in the social world, these emotions are uh, produced or perhaps not produced. And then also the kind of social nature in terms of giving the emotions uh, labels and those labels carry different meanings and associations uh, with them. And so emotions have implications for the self. Uh, you know, basically, you know, sometimes, you know, we think of self just in terms of identity, but self is strongly uh, connected to emotions as well. Uh, you know, I feel this way, I'm happy, I'm not happy. So again, it's a way of kind of self-identifying uh, through your emotional states uh, rather than different cognitive states. And then you can look at, um, you know, the social definitions I just talked about in terms of, you know, we kind of use these understandings, socially speaking, uh, feeling rules like we talked about previously uh, to kind of understand what's expected uh, of us, what's expected of others in terms of emotions being displayed or emotions uh, not being displayed. So again, all this is uh, just socially learned. You know, the book kind of gets into the uh, kind of culture of emotions a little bit where, you know, every different situation carries a different culture. And that culture has expectations for kind of emotional uh, work as well. You know, at a, at a ball game, you can display certain emotions. Uh, you know, at a funeral, you have to display other types of emotions. So again, they're part of a larger uh, situation. And, you know, we kind of manage our emotions in accordance uh, to those expectations. So the book talked about a couple different theoretical frameworks, you know, kind of sub theories that are sometimes used within the kind of larger uh, symbolic interaction, uh, symbolic interactionism umbrella. And so one is the structural uh, interactional theory. And basically here we're looking at the fluctuation of emotions uh, when it comes to, you know, do you experience positive emotions? Uh, do you experience uh, negative emotions? And those experiences, the fluctuations are kind of in reference to uh, two things here. So two different variables. Uh, variable power and uh, variable status. So basically, you know, you have these expectations that, you know, you're supposed to have certain power over others. And when those expectations are met, you know, you exercise your power over them. People are listening to you and following your commands. And then you should be kind of at a emotional easiness, you know, kind of emotional level where everything's, you know, okay. Uh, but on the other hand, if you have this power over people, but they're not obeying you, they're not paying attention, uh, then you're going to experience kind of negative emotions. And uh, so it's basically, you know, you have expectations that connected to your degree of power, you expect certain things to happen as a result. And when those expectations are met, then again, you have that kind of emotional uh, keel, you just kind of level. But when the, there's a mismatch, when you expect things to happen this way, but they happen another way, that's going to foster those uh, negative emotions. And the same thing happens with uh, status. You know, uh, you have certain uh, social statuses in every situation. And kind of with that, there's certain expectations in terms of uh, how people are going to treat you, how you should treat other people. And when those expectations are met, and when people kind of follow the uh, game as the game is supposed to be played. And again, there should be that emotional kind of levelness. But when things are not the way they should be, uh, people are not respecting you, recognizing you in terms of your status in a given situation. Again, that can foster those negative emotions. And so we can talk about positive emotions too uh, with this theory. So sometimes there's kind of a mismatch, uh, but in a positive way where, you know, you know, maybe you lack the power in a situation, but people are listening to you anyway. That can make you uh, feel good. And then, you know, the status thing as well. Maybe people are giving you more status than you thought you deserved or thought you had in a situation. And with that mismatch, you can experience, you know, positive emotions. So, you know, the mismatch can cause the, you know, negative things to occur and the positive to occur. It just uh, matters which direction that mismatch is in, the positive direction, positive emotions, or a negative direction will foster those negative emotions. 
So affect uh, control theory, something I talked about uh, very early in the semester. And so this is basically, you know, a theory of predicting uh, behavior. And it kind of basically says that based on your self-concepts, you know, your identity, um, you know, we act in accordance to how we think we are as people. So, you know, if you think you're, you know, a smart person and uh, you do uh, badly on a test, uh, that should cause kind of negative emotions to emerge uh, because you think you're this, but your behavior um, didn't match it. And on the other hand, if you do bad on a test, but you think you're a bad student to begin with, that shouldn't cause any negative emotions because it kind of fits your self-concept. So in the book, I think the book uh, kind of smartly says this ties into uh, needs, uh, I and me, and the relationship between those two concepts, uh, but more on an emotional level. Uh, we try to make our actions match our identities because when there is that match, uh, we have that emotional um, kind of level, uh, but when there's a mismatch between kind of who we think we are and what we actually do, and then that can cause those negative emotions or what's me talked about more on a cognitive level, that psychological tension. So when looking at, you know, other, you know, social dimensions to emotions, you know, the book talks about a few different examples. I just wanted to pull out a couple and, um, kind of talk about these things in relation to that social element of emotions. So when it comes to kind of role taking emotions, basically this is when we have to, you know, kind of get into the uh, mind, body and spirit of other people and try to take kind of their perspective in terms of you know, how they are feeling or how they would feel in a given situation. So again, I think the best ways to uh, think about uh, role taking emotions is thinking about empathy, in terms of, you know, you trying to understand, you know, how other people um, kind of feel in a given situation. And uh, you know, empathy is something that more relates to, you know, you kind of been through it yourself. And so you can understand what somebody else is going through and the uh, similar situation. And sympathy is this the idea that, you know, maybe you haven't gone through it yourself, but you can be sympathetic and you can try to think about, you know, what it would be like. So again, you're just, you know, if you've been through it or if you haven't been through it, you're trying to take that perspective of the other person and then kind of, you know, see the emotional uh, reflection in yourself uh, as a result. And so uh, likewise, we can look at kind of emotions and identity. And this ties nicely into what I was talked about with the affect control theory. But uh, here we're just kind of, we expect uh, certain emotions to be practiced at certain times and we don't expect other emotions to be practiced at other times. And so personally, you know, when we meet the expectations, you know, we should feel uh, normal. But when we don't meet them, that's when we can have those kind of fluctuations of negative emotions being fostered or positive ones. And with other people, you know, we expect the same out of them to kind of follow those uh, feeling rules. And, uh, you know, in a given situation, basically, act in terms of your emotions, how you're expected to act. And you know, when people are giving you those emotional performances, you see them as being kind of normal people. They're getting what you expect to see, emotionally speaking, out of other people. But when you don't see what you expect to see, that's when you can start to see other people as more kind of a stigmatized identity. And the book talked about uh, examples when it comes to uh, court cases and you know, juries handing out sentences and the jury will be, you know, a little bit easier in terms of their punishment on people who are emotionally speaking, uh, kind of displaying what they're expected to display, you know, within that setting. If you're displaying uh, regret, if you're just displaying, um, you know, that you're sorrow, that you're sorry, uh, then that's what the jury, as the people expect to see in those situations. And they'll be a little bit easier on you compared to if you don't see what you expect to see. If you know, the defendant says they're uh, cold stare, you know, very stoic, uh, then you, know, you ex don't expect that. You expect some type of regret. And when you don't get that, uh, then it'd be harsher in terms of the punishment you give out. So you know, we can see how emotions relate to kind of one's identity 
but also we can recognize kind of socially speaking that uh, we expect certain things out of people cognitively, you know, how they act, uh, what they're doing, not doing, but also we expect certain things out of people emotionally speaking as well in terms of how they're displaying emotions, how they're either following or not following uh, those feeling rules. So in the next part of the chapter, we'll get to in our next class, and you know, we'll get more into kind of the uh, performance of emotions, uh, kind of the displaying of emotions, even though the emotions may not be sincere, uh, but also kind of holding in, suppressing emotions. And again, um, you do that and not to be insincere in itself, but you do that just to kind of follow those feeling rules. So we'll come back to this next class. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.